Welcome to Lingua Mania, uh, live Friday here at the Ashmolean Museum. I'm Kirsten Shepard Barr, and I'm acting director of Torch this term. And here we have this amazing opportunity to share research with the wider public and enjoy a late night at the museum. Ling Lingua Mania has been curated by the research project team, Creative Multilingualism. You can just about glimpse some of the many logos of the people and organizations involved. Torch is the Oxford Research Center in the Humanities, and we support and facilitate multidisciplinary research and enable wider and public engagement. And this is the last of the bite-sized talks in this room tonight, and it is a great pleasure to introduce Henrike Lehnemann, and she is professor of medieval German literature here at Oxford. Growing up in three medieval German towns, she has always been fascinated by objects, objects as tangible link to the past working for her doctorate on medieval manuscripts from Nuremberg and for her second book on representations of Judith in medieval art and literature. Currently, her research focuses on manuscripts written by nuns in northern Germany in the 15th and 16th centuries. For the quincentenary of the publication of Martin Luther's 95 Theses, she organizes, with the help of Torch and Singers, the Taylorian, and many volunteers, events around the Reformation focusing on printing and singing. Henrika's talk will be on a Tristan tile in the Ashmolean. Over to you. Thanks, Elika. Um, I'm switching on this uh, lapel mic because I need to be roaming along the room, as you might have guessed from um, the exhibit that is swaying there with the help of uh, two of my students and uh, my niece um, <laughs> that they'll have to take a bow, uh, bow afterwards. Um, it's very much uh, the interest to, to link materiality and language. So what I'm going to talk about today is an iconic object here from uh, the Eschmolian. I'd hope to have it here in uh, Realiter but um, it's at the moment for handling sessions, actually, in the storage. So if you are a student, um, you can um, go to a class on Tristan and then be shown into the storage and be allowed to handle it. Um, you are allowed to handle this as well, which is a life-size replica and has the advantage of also being used as a Frisbee. Um, <laughs> and I've, I've picked uh, this story because um, it links across the languages. It's a representation of Tristan playing the harp for King Mark. And it comes from an English abbey, Chertsey in Surrey. Uh, the tiles were probably um, commissioned for, actually for King Henry III. And you can see some of the themes um, of that period in England. And I want to connect it to another object which I also brought life-size um, from my area of research which is northern Germany and which has a, a low German retelling of the Tristan um, story. Um, I forgot to, uh, where is the, there is the switch to. Just briefly, um, where we are with uh, Tristan traveling, and Tristan both as a figure and as a text. So the story of Tristan takes place across several islands and the continent. Tristan himself coming from the Bretagne, going over to his uncle, King Mark, although he first doesn't know that it's his um, uncle, uh, they're playing the harp um, and being recognized as a, a valiant knight, um, sent to Ireland where um, he's fighting um, Morold or Marot uh, to free the, um, England from the that they had to pay, brings back uh, the knowledge of the beautiful princess Isolde to his uncle, 
Malke, Malke um, then, or rather the envious uh, barons commission him to go back to Ireland to win Isolde and then um, the famous scene occurs which is here at the very end of the tapestry that um, they fall in love on the boat back from um, Ireland by drinking the love potion. And um, then a whole story evolves of deception um, and uh, the attempt to conceal this love um, at the court. And it ends um, with uh, Tristan uh, dying and Isolde um, dying of broken heart when she comes to uh, see him. Um, and this story traveled as much or even more than Tristan. So um, we have from an oral um, tradition then the French versions retold by Thomas um, de Bretagne, so uh, Anglo-Norman version, which was the one on which this uh, tile was based. And actually I've brought along several more tiles um, that are now in the uh, British Museum, which also uh, came up. So to give you an impression of how this would have fitted in a whole narrative. So you have a narrative sequence similar to the tapestry. And um, I thought what I would show you is how differently the story is told according to which context um, it's introduced. And in a way, it uh, echoes uh, what uh, the speaker about the co um, Cloud Cuckoo Land has just said, how in each language uh, the bird's name are accustomed to the culture or what we had seen um, with um, one of the other speakers speaking about Chinese um, pottery that is important in different countries with, uh, and then um, introduced into this culture. Can you still hold it? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. <laughs> um, so what we see here is what nuns in early 14th century Germany made of it. The Abbey Wienhausen, where the tapestry comes from, uh, was founded by the daughter-in-law of Henry the Lion. Henry the Lion was uh, married to um, Mathilde, the sister of Richard uh, uh, Lionheart. Uh, so the mother-in-law of the founder of this abbey would have read the same story that was read by um, the uh, monks in Chertsey uh, uh, Abbey and by Henry III for whom the tiles were commissioned. But um, what the nuns here stitch in the tapestry is not based on an actual written uh, version. So none of the texts, neither Eilhard nor Gottfried, but it's based on uh, the um, uh, oral tradition and it emphasizes the fairy tale elements of the whole story. Um, so it starts with um, King Malke um, and Tristan standing for him, so more or less at the same point at which we had the tile. Um, Tristan debat den Konig dat modes drieden. So Tristan asked the king whether he would be allowed to go to battle. And you can see from um, the kind of comic style reduction of the facial expression that Malke isn't pleased with the idea, also from the hand uh, gestures. He tries to hold Tristan back, but Tristan sets out, sets out across um, the sea, and um, you see in lovely red-blue uh, <coughs> opposition 
of a battling um, between these two. Um, Trisamo de Striten, um, Veda Morolde, against Morold. And there you see Morold and see them striden, uh, one against the other. Um, der König sprach, um, Ek wille de Lävere um, geven uh, min Königrieg half. I'd rather give you half of my kingdom. So that's um, not the language of the courtly Romans, it's a language of the fairy tale which is included. I'd rather give you half my kingdom than let you go off to um, battle. The nuns had a slightly difficulty fitting all the text um, according to the images. So the um, images are already further advanced when they are catching up because um, they have an additional line with all the coat of arms. So um, this um, goes on. Um, Tristram de kehr de sich umme und de set sette upe dat peert. So Tristram turned around and got on his horse. Um, peert, peert, um, it's low German, so no um, shift. Upe dat uh, uh, peert. Um, um, unde stride uh, and battled an um, des Koniges Dank without the permission of Malke. Do quam uh, fro uh, kam er vor den Konig um, und uh, 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 war verwundet uh, und er lag um, ver, uh, verwundet. Um, do, um, so he comes back and is uh, wounded because of uh, the battle with um, Morold. The king puts him in the um, in a ship, sends him off to Ireland where he plays the harp um, to gain access to the um, court. And there is the scene where Isolde and Brangene heal the sick Tristan. And this is made into the centerpiece of the whole uh, tapestry. It's a scene that otherwise that's not figured on any of the tiles in uh, the men's monastery, but it's uh, the central scene for um, a woman's convent that showed that they played a central role in healing, actually, um, the night and enabling all these courtly battles that are going around, around it. And uh, Timo, is who, who is holding this side, Timo, look out. Yeah, uh, he, he's just... Uh, writing a proposal on, a PhD proposal on medicine in uh, Wienhausen, because we can actually, uh, uh, we know a lot about uh, the uh, medical knowledge of, of the nuns in the monastery. So he's healed, um, he sets back to Malke, and there comes a scene which is only reported um, in some of the French versions, not in the German versions, uh, namely, you see two birds um, with a golden hair that uh, bring the golden hair of Isolde to, to King Mark and that makes him fall in love uh, with her. And that was obviously an element that the nuns loved and despite not having it in their vernacular tradition, they picked it up from a European um, uh, transmission. Then comes uh, a rather splendid, uh, so yeah, this is the central scene um, that uh, Brangiele, which is um, the vernacular spelling of uh, Brangen, und de Fru Isolde um, in, uh, rescued him um, mit der Salve, um, der Salve, uh, the balm. Uh, as the center, 
And then um, a favorite across languages is uh, the uh, dragon fight, which you have here. And um, it then ends um, with a love uh, potion. Um, and it, does, uh, it leaves out the um, uh, tragic ending. Uh, so it, it ends with a, um, like a fairy tale, uh, with a love um, potion rather than with a tragic ending. And so you could, in the material culture, uh, going along with the different retellings, configure the story to your own cultural context. Um, and a lot of that was discovered, actually, through the, this uh, very tile, um, which um, in the 1920s was seen by Loomis, a scholar, um, a Rhodes scholar, uh, who was looking into European heritage. And um, that, he was so fascinated by this tile that he started looking into European parallels, edited um, the critical edition that's still used of the Anglo-Norman version, edited uh, the Nordic version, and was the first to discover the Celtic origins of um, the Tristan legend. So this object has a long history, not just across Europe, but also across scholarship in Oxford. Many thanks. <laughs>